Okay, they're actually back. Blink-182 just released a video and I think it's up to like 5 million views in a few days. It's crazy. So this is the first riff that I ever learned from them that I had to teach a student. And I remember thinking, these guys just sound like a more poppy Green Day to me. <laughs> Since I love heavy music, I remember being intrigued by My Chemical Romance the first time I heard them. And then when I learned about them, I really appreciated their stage presence, their energy, and their music. So uh, this is a tune that we actually played with one of my student bands at one time. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Another band that I really appreciated right off the bat was Sum 41. Even though I thought their first big release, which we'll do in a little bit, I thought it sounded a lot like the Beastie Boys. So I was telling my students all these older references and they're just rolling their eyes like, whatever, old man. Okay, so anyway, we're gonna start with a different track by the band. We'll get to Fat Lip in a little bit, but this is the Hell song. <laughs> I love the way that riff just rolls off of the fingers. It's kind of tricky, actually. Now, this next riff is from a band that's more from my generation, but uh, they did make their way into the pop punk movement of the future, and uh, it was really cool to see the two worlds collide. <laughs> It took me a long time to warm up to the band All Time Low. I think I was just way too over the hill at that time. And uh, my student brought it in and things just kept getting more poppy and poppy sounding. But I thought they had a kind of an edge to them that was still pretty cool and they were very catchy. <laughs> Okay, as promised, here's Fat Lip. I still say the singing part sounds like the Beastie Boys, but uh, I've really grown to love Fat Lip. It's just one of those iconic riffs that you just have to learn to play. Now this next band, I always thought they were gonna be a lot bigger. The first riff in this song just blows me away. Super heavy and super groovy. The biggest thing I remembered from this song is that they said Nintendo in it. This next riff is actually from one of my favorite pop punk songs of all time, and uh, you'll see why. One thing that was really great about pop punk bands is they always had a great chord progression going on underneath some sort of melodic line. And I think this one really captures a great sound. One time I got asked to play guitar for this band that was going to play Jingle Ball. And that's this huge concert that they used to put on for a lot of more pop rock bands, I guess, and pop artists. I remember being backstage and I saw Good Charlotte hanging out and I thought I had made it because I'm just like walking by waving at them. They didn't see me, but I felt cool. <laughs> I 
I love the way that groove hits once the vocals come in. Such a groovy tune. Fun to drum on that one as well. So this next one, I clearly remember my student coming in. Her name was Katie, and she wanted to learn Paramore. <laughs> Sorry, I went a little crazy at the end there. Here's a riff once again by Blink-182 that I always thought sounded like Metallica's one for some reason. <laughs> Not all these tunes are going to be purely pop punk, and the last two bands here are a good example of that. So the first one's The Offspring, and uh, it's funny because even my youngest students seem to know and want to learn this riff. <laughs> I'm not really sure how this last riff actually crossed over into the pop punk world. I think it's because it's such a quirky, catchy tune. And it's by a band called Harvey Danger. And their biggest hit was called Flagpole Sitta. And I recall a lot of students wanting to learn this song. And I kind of had to break it to them that the intro riff is actually done on a bass. But we still would play it on guitar and they had fun. So who cares? <laughs> Alright everyone, that was a lot of fun revisiting those riffs. I still remember it was a good feeling because my students still had a lot of songs that they wanted to learn back then, a lot of cool riffs to learn, and uh, sadly that started to taper off. It's kind of weird how it happened as soon as streaming started getting big and people had all the music they wanted on their phones, and all of a sudden they had less and less stuff that they wanted to learn. It made no sense to me. But Anyway, let me know if you have any favorite songs from the pop punk era, and I'll read it in the comments section. So we'll catch you guys there. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.